Well, friends, have you ever considered the truth and the reality that God knows you by name? Some of you might find that to be rather shocking because after all, isn't God super busy? Doesn't God have a lot going on? And how in the world would he ever remember or let alone know you? And yet let's remember this about the very nature of God. This book, the Bible, is his book to us. This is the will of God and it's God's will that you know him. God is knowable. I'm not talking about the gods of some mystics or the gods of some uh, ancient people group. I'm talking about the eternal God. There's only one God, his word tells us. And this one God is the God who knows you. And the fact of the matter is, is that he knows everything about you. The, the, his, this Bible, his Bible says that he knows the things about you before they ever happen. He knows your thoughts before they arrive in your head and he knows the days of your life. So listen, my friend, to those of you who have chosen Christ, have accepted Christ, then the Spirit of God lives in you. And he bears witness to the fact that you are a child of God. He lives in you, and the Bible makes it very clear that he's given you the power to overcome anything that comes into your life. So listen, my friends, there's no need to fear, doubt, or to worry because the God of heaven knows you. Let's grab our Bibles, let's dive in to see what God's word has to say to you and I about how he knows us by name and how intimate we can actually know him. So church, let's dive into our Bible study now. When we talk about saying it, don't talk about religion. We don't wanna talk about church. I don't know if you're visiting here for the first time or not, but the last thing the people around you want to do, I agree with them, and that is we could do a whole lot of other things on a morning like this than to come and just be religious. Who needs that? What we want to do is experience the true, awesome power of the living God. Listen, if Christ is not risen from the dead, then there is no salvation. We have no hope, so let's leave. What's the old saying? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. There is no eternity. Whoever dies with the most toys wins. And that's the thinking of the world. But Christ is risen from the dead, and that changes everything. And so we don't want to talk about it. We want to say it. We want to say it to the world. And we say this. This is what we looked at last time, is that the Lord has called you his own. Oh, this gets beautiful. The Bible there said to us in our previous study, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Notice God did not save you to put you in a place of fear. In fact, if you understand your great salvation that is upon your life, fear dissipates. I'm not being cavalier when I tell you this. Fear has no place in the life of a believer. That doesn't mean we're ignorant. It doesn't mean that we're not aware of the science. It doesn't mean that we're not aware of the weather. It doesn't mean that we're not aware of the economy. We're aware of all those things. I believe probably more in tune than most people. But we're not held by fear. The world has never been a scarier place to live in, in my opinion. But the Christian has no fear. The Bible tells us that we are to fear one, and that is God and him only. Jesus said, don't be afraid of those who can kill you, but rather be in fear of him who can both take your life and send your soul to hell. Wow. That verse goes on, verse 15, but you receive the spirit. Notice the contradiction. There's the bondage of the spirit of fear, but there's the liberty of the spirit of adoption. He says, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Remarkable, beautiful thing. And we looked at this, church, Abba, Father. It's the Aramaic word. Mark this verse down, if you would. It's Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive. He's speaking to the Christian. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. In which you once walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. A reference to Satan. It's pretty creepy, right? He's the prince of the power of the air. Atmosphere. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. 
among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Thank God, though. Listen to Galatians 4, verse 6. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Listen, ask yourself, is that true of your life? Well, Pastor Jack, how can I know? Because you will be preempted or prone <clears throat> to cry out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. That's good news. That's awesome news. One more time. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 15. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. This is a profound statement, church. The Holy Spirit is speaking nonstop, 24-7, 365. The word implies continually to you, the believer. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness. He's speaking to you and to us. For after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. That is a powerful statement. I know there's a lot of talk these days about you can think whatever you want to think as long as you don't go do it. The Bible says no way. The Bible says what you think about you wind up doing. And it matters what you think. It matters what you uh, meditate on. It matters what you fantasize about. God sees and God knows. But the born again heart, the new heart, is a heart that is changed because the spirit of God and the spirit of adoption dwells within us. What a glorious thing. We are owned by the living God. Amen. My name's Jack. It means nothing. But God's got a new name according to the Bible for my life. Whatever your name is, the Bible says, when you and I show up in heaven, we're going to get a new name. Now, some of you may have some. I met last, listen, I met recently uh, who was visiting from Canada, Anastasia. <laughs> what a name. Now, I don't know what that name means in Canadian, <laughs> but in Russian, it means resurrection. That's awesome. What's Jack mean? <laughs> I don't know. But I know this. God knows my name. He knows my real name. He knows your real name. And uh, that's one of the great thrills about getting into heaven. So listen, by name, God knows you. And it says in verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. The Holy Spirit is in union with our human spirit if we're born again, if the Spirit of God lives within us. And I wrote myself this note to keep myself under control, and it's this. I say this humbly, thankfully, gratefully, yet with all confidence that this bears witness is for your peace, security, and confidence is the greatest, most assuring thing that I've experienced in my life. I mean that sincerely. Mark it down. Bears witness. Two words in English, one word in the Greek language. And it means this. It means to legally and officially give testimony, which is admissible or eligible to be entered into the records of the court. Technically, the word court should be capitalized. It implies God's court. The Holy Spirit... For you, the believer, he knows you by name, and he is bearing witness before the courtroom of God that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. That should set you free. That should cause you to sit up straight and get excited about the world in which you and I have been deployed into. This is not heaven. Now, look, Lisa and I just got back from a trip away with our kids, and we went up to uh, Washington State, which, yes, it's true, it's just as liberal as it is here. But when you get outside of the city, it's really, frankly, when you get outside of the city, it's just as conservative as it is here. Listen, you get out of L.A. and you get out of San Diego and you get out of Oakland and San Francisco and Sacramento and you find out there's people who actually think. <laughs> and, uh, and we experienced the same thing. And uh, we went to a place called Gig Harbor. Have you ever heard of Gig Harbor? Strange name, beautiful place. 
Now, don't go there now that I've said it. We want to make sure it stays quiet and quaint. So the next time we go, it's, it's just as quiet and quaint. But the amazing thing about it is, you know you've gone to a good place when you don't want to leave. But might I remind you that this is not heaven? We're in a battlefield, friends. We're in a battleground. This whole world is. And you and I are children of the Most High God. Listen, our citizenship, the Bible says, is in heaven. But yet, we're still here in this world. And that's why we're battling light and darkness and evil and good. We must. The Holy Spirit within us compels us to confront things. We'll talk more about this in a moment. But understand this. It's very personal to me. And I, I'm fighting the temptation to make this really dramatic. I'm trying to be calm here. But for you and I and for many of us in this nation, in this community... This portion of scripture should delight us that the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. It means God's got a testimony that is in real time regarding the things that you and I are living through. I know that there's a bumper sticker that says when the going gets tough, the tough go shopping. No, listen, when the going gets tough, the Christian goes to the word of God. And listen, when churches shut down, which might have been the best thing for some of those churches, I should say for the people that attended them, people ran and they ran to the truth, no matter where they were in the world. They ran to the truth. Why? Because the Spirit of God has got your name. You ran to the truth. God was dealing out food, and you got in line, and you ate up the Word of God. Why? Because He's got your name. And you've been made anew, and the Holy Spirit lives in you. God knows your name. And I love that. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Acts 1, verse 3. He also presented himself, that is Jesus, alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Don't you love that? Truth, the power of God. This God who came and died and rose again from the grave is exactly the God that you need, and thank God, for those of us, he has our name, it's the God that we have. Our God came, he suffered and died, and he rose again from the dead, sign me up. Right? Think about it. The alternative, I hope, is unacceptable to you. And that is be religious. Join a group. Join a church. Join a cult. Go do your thing. Listen, I'm staying right here in the Bible. Right here in the Word of God. He did it. He's going to see to it. He's going to get it done. It's him who came and died and rose again from the grave. All the things that concern you in this world, Jesus did. You break the grave. You conquer death. That's the God you want. And that's the God that we have if he's our Lord and Savior. But notice this out of Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Convincing proofs. That means confirming evidences, multiple things, which of course come from God, which are immutable facts. They don't change. Psalm 100 verse 3. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank God we didn't make ourselves. First of all, we can't. But a lot of people, in a way, think that they have. Maybe they're evolutionists. This is, a, by the way, this is a really amazing time. You and I are living through this time right now. It's thrilling. Because you're either a Christian or you're not. Have you noticed gray area is gone? I love it. There's no way now for you can hide in the shadows. There's no shadows anymore. You're either a follower of God or you're not. And for those who are not, they're having a rough time explaining things that are going on around the world. And then we as believers are going, mm -hmm. wow, wait, what's the headline? Breaking news. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Wait, this is going on in Israel. Hang on. Wait, hang on. Oh, yeah, Wow. Oh, World Economic Forum, Cashless Society, put a mark in your right hand. Wait, what? Oh, wow, thank you. It's all here. It's all here. What an amazing God. Isaiah 49, verse 1 says, The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. Excuse me, hello, wait a minute. This is a 3,000-year-old statement. 
I don't even know if they knew back then that a female, the uterus, the female, the woman has a matrix, this matrix. Isaiah, the prophet, under the inspiration of God, speaks biology. His statement is 100% admissible in the court of medical practice. Did you know that? The Bible says, I've called you from your womb. I brought you forth from the matrix of your mother. He has made mention of my name. Now, this is a reference to the Messiah, but it's true about us as well. Is there convincing proofs, confirming evidences and immutable facts regarding our relationship with God? Oh, yes, absolutely. The Holy Spirit is one with our spirit until Christ calls us home. And that word spirit, by the way, in both places here is the word that uh, we get pneumatic. You know what a pneumatic tool is, anybody? You go to a shop and they plug their tool in and you hear them go, sound, right? You know what that is? That's air-driven tools, pneumatic. This is the word in the Greek. The believer, in association with the Holy Spirit, we are (laughs) air-driven. We are driven by the power of the Holy Spirit to be moved, empowered by the air, Air air-driven, wind-driven, the breath that resides within the human soul, the observable and active consciousness of life. There's nobody in this room right now or watching right now that can deny the fact that you've got a consciousness. Listen, if you deny that you have a consciousness, you need to, get, you need to hang up now, turn off the TV and dial 911. <laughs> you have a consciousness. And the Bible says that comes from God. The Holy Spirit air drives your life as it were. Now I like that because if you've ever seen an air driven tool, it's literally worthless until... It's plugged into the air source. Look, this world says we're worthless. Sometimes we say of ourselves, I'm worthless. Well, I want to encourage you, get plugged in. The Spirit of God would love to plug you into his power, his source. And it's not reserved for me only. It's for, it's for anyone who will take that truth and say, that's it. I'm gonna, I, my name is known to God. His spirit dwells within me. And I'm going to live my life for him. And I'm going to quit calling the shots. And I'm going to let him live his life through me. I'm going I'm to be air driven from this moment forward. I tell you what, God will expel fear from your life. He'll give you purpose and vision. And once, as Jesus said, you put your hand to the plow... He says, don't look back. Now, we don't do plows anymore, but what happens is when you put your hands on a plow and you're moving forward, if you look back, you automatically turn. Okay? I don't know if you've ever driven a fast car, but there's you never look over your shoulder when you're driving a very fast car. Did you know that? Never do that. You'll you'll wake up dead. (laughs) Just the turning of your neck turns the wheel. Don't do it. Jesus says, don't look back. Keep moving forward. Beautiful. Well, isn't it absolutely comforting to know this, that God knows you by name? And when we talk about the Holy Spirit in the believer, that is the Holy Spirit for everything that you and I need, when we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, I love the fact that that pneuma, the pneumatic power of God, the wind of God, the surge of God's Holy Spirit's power in the life of the believer. Listen, it's my opinion, but I think it's pretty well documented by now that the church is very anemic in the world around us today. It doesn't take an Einstein to look around to see how evil is advancing. But where's the church standing up, right? Where's the countermeasures to what's going on in all of the evil of our world? Well, friends, listen, if you are a Christian today, I'm just speaking to the Christian. If you're a Christian today, I wanna ask you, do you sense the power of God? Micah, the Old Testament prophet said, and I quote, I'm full of power by the Holy Spirit. 
I do believe that the New Testament teaches us, especially the book of Acts, that you and I should know the power of God in our lives. Listen, we're frail humans. Of course, God knows this, but he empowers us by his Holy Spirit. That's how you and I are able to do impossible things. In fact, I want to leave this picture in your mind, if you would. I, I had the opportunity of growing up in a home where my, my dad was uh, very much into mechanics. And I remember visiting shops and stuff as a little kid. I remember going to some auto races even where they had these air-driven tools, pneumatic tools, right? So by itself, this gun or this uh, air gun or this pneumatic tool for the, the nuts that would be on for the wheel of the race car, that it just sat there dead and lifeless. But there was this red rubber hose and the pit guy would take that hose and plug it in to the base of that, that pneumatic gun and it would come alive. And that seemingly dead gun could take the big wheels off of a race car. And it was quite amazing. The sound of it was impressive and the power of it was impressive. Friend, listen, you and I are lifeless without Jesus Christ, but it's his will that the Holy Spirit plug you in to the very power of God. He wants to use you like that, like that amazing tool. And so, friends, I want you to be leaning more upon the Holy Spirit. You say, Jack, it's so dark out there. You know, the world is so wicked. Don't let that get you down. Don't you know that's a wake up call to us to stand up and to get empowered by the Holy Spirit? Because listen, everything that you can do through Christ matters. But listen, for some of you, you need to start right here. You need to start by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm gonna lead you in this prayer of salvation. Maybe these things are making sense, but now you've decided I want that power in my life because I need my sins forgiven. Christ died on the cross for me and I wanna have a new life. I wanna come alive. So you would just simply pray, pray this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and I give my life to you. I thank you for dying for me in Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, God has heard your prayer. We'd love to hear from you, not to get anything from you, but to send you material on how you can walk with Jesus Christ now, today, and forevermore. You can simply go to jackhibbs.com and you can find out how you can get more information, more resources, and also how you can follow us on various social media sites. Until next time, God bless you. You are watching Real Life with Jack Hibbs. How can we move beyond the superficial and step into a deeper relationship with God? By learning to pursue Him. A.W. Tozer teaches us how to do that in his insightful book, The Pursuit of God, a Christian classic that's influenced the lives of millions of believers for decades. Contrasting the saints of the Bible who long to see more of God's glory with the stubbornly content Christians of today, Tozer reignites a yearning to go beyond the surface and experience a profound closeness with the Lord. Unravel the secrets of a more intimate relationship with the Creator in this time-tested masterpiece. You can receive The Pursuit of God when you make a gift of any amount this month to the Ministry of Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Get your copy by going online to jackhibbs.com or by calling 877-777-2346. Order now. Life is full of fear, doubt, and worry. The more you listen to and see the world today, the easier it is to feel hopeless and helpless. Amidst the confusion, a voice of hope has emerged. The Real Life Network. Founded by Jack Hibbs, the Real Life Network is a free digital media platform, void of the noise of secular media that attack people of faith. Click on the QR code or sign up for free at reallifenetwork.com. Fast forward your faith. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effect. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? 
Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.